first up we're going to work with a precedent image. So I want you to find a precedent that is um, uh, a vector image with a colour palette that inspires you and a design aesthetic that you think you would like to um, refer to in your work. So here's an image that I've um, decided to use. I just drag that from the desktop and um, just place that on your artboard. So um, you just can drag the image around and hold down shift to make it larger or smaller um, to fit the page. Once you've got that there, we're going to create a series of color swatches next to the image. So first up, uh, choose the rectangle tool and just make a rectangle or hold down shift to create a square next to the image. While that's selected, choose the eyedropper tool, select a colour from your image, and you'll see that fills the square. So to create the series of swatches, the first thing we need to do is go to View and choose Show Rulers. Once we've selected that, I'm going to go over to the corner here, click in that corner and drag, and if we drag that um, cross over to the edge of the square or the shape and let go, it's brought the um, X and Y zero point of the axis right onto that corner, which is just going to help us to measure the shape because we need to do that to, um, to duplicate it. So we've done that, go up to object, notice that the square is still selected, choose transform move and here we're going to transform the object so that it is um, zero on the horizontal and looking at vertical you can see that it's just under 72 picks so we'll put in 72 or you put in a number just a tiny bit bigger than the shape that you have drawn and if we click on preview you can see that that's where it's going to move to, which looks about right. So I'm going to click copy and you'll see I've just created a duplicate of the square. Now I need six of these to uh, use for my color swatches. If I go up to object again, choose transform again and notice the hotkey is command D then that creates another shape for me. So I'm just going to create three more clicking Command D. Okay, so with your image you can choose between uh, three to six colors to pull from an image and um, no more or less than that. So you may have to be selective of colors if there's more than six in your image but I'd, I'd sort of recommend you choose images with a limited color palette. So we've got this square selected, eyedropper, I'm just going to click on the colour and it fills that square. If I go back to this square and um, click V, it changes my tool to selection, click on the square, go back to the image, click I to change the tool to eyedropper, choose colour and just repeat doing that until you've selected all the colours that you want. Okay, so there goes the six colors that I've chosen from the image. So I've got those, I've got my precedent image. This could be really useful for me to refer back to. And it's an important thing to um, just make note of where the image came from. So choose the type tool and just make a, um, a type box down the bottom. You can zoom in, I'll do that so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna type in, um, the name of the designer. So that means that if I want to refer back to using this again, um, it's just recorded for me. Or if, if anyone's looking through my work, they know that where the inspiration came from. Okay, so now I've got a, um, a color palette that I might choose to work with in my own work. To make this useful for me, we can save it in our swatches. So choose the selection tool, 
I hold it down and drag over all of the colors and then go to your swatches panel click on the new color group and make sure selected artwork is chosen and then you can give your color group a name so maybe I will refer back to the original designer and click OK and it's created a color group in my swatches so this is going to be really useful if I um, decide to use these colors in my own designs it means that when I'm working on something they'll be right there for me